What is up guys, this is the Monday Night Rewind Podcast coming at you once again with a brand new episode. And so before we get into the show, um, I just want to start off by saying that this is now, I say like officially a podcast, because we are now a podcast that can be found on SoundCloud and iTunes. So under each of those, you can find us under the Monday Night Rewind. And so you can see a little picture that looks kind of like the old Raw is War logo type design, sort of, but it says MNR. MNR podcast and so you can subscribe to that so every time a new episode drops you can get that so if you want to listen to it on like a phone or something like that and not have to be on YouTube where the video play or the pic thing plays but it's just the picture and audio and stuff like that and you don't want to do that you can download it and play it through there so be sure to, to um, subscribe to that especially on the iTunes I mean I know not everyone has an iPhone but that's the best way to keep up with all the podcast stuff but if not you can still um, follow here at at awesome nerd show on YouTube so be sure if you do that to subscribe and uh, leave a like for me and if you have any comments you can leave it there or especially on iTunes and stuff you can leave reviews and comments there so be sure to do all that for me if you enjoy this podcast and want to um, keep up with all the episodes so this week Monday Night Rewind podcast going back 20 years to the Monday Night Wars and this week we are in September 22nd 1997 and we started with Raw 226 and then Nitro 106. Um, so pretty decent episodes both this week. So um, of course we'll start off with Raw. And this Raw was kind of a big important Raw. Because for one it took place in Madison Square Garden. So anytime WWF is in Madison Square Garden it's kind of a big event. And then we get a big part of the Attitude Era that takes place during the show. Um, so the show kicks off first with a recap of the like history of Madison Square Garden of like special events. So of course we get like parts of like the old WWF. So um, WWF and early WWF like in the early 80s. Of course we get WrestleMania 1 and stuff like just parts from all sorts of um, events that have happened in Madison Square Garden throughout the years. And so it just has a historic moments in wrestling and from there we get into our first match which is Rocky Maivia or The Rock as you know him versus Ahmed Johnson and The Rock comes out with the um, Nation of Domination of course and this is another match for the um, Intercontinental Tournament so that's um, what this match is for whatever so as soon as the match kicks off Sergeant Slaughter comes out and he sends the rest of the Nation members besides Rocky to the back so they don't interfere with the match because you know they have a thing out for Ahmed Johnson um, so as soon as the match starts though there's immediately Rocky sucks chants and boos that are like extremely loud that take or like you know spread through the crowd and that's just you know what The Rock got back in the days until he starts winning people over later in 98 um and so as this match is going on for some reason Captain Lou Albano is back and he's just out walking around ringside like all around the ring and he's got a notepad and he's taking notes and stuff so and they I think commentary mentions that he's out like scouting for a new like person to manage or something so that's really all he's you don't really get anything else for that you just you just see him in the background um at one point the rock ends up knocking Ahmed Johnson out of the ring and uh when he does that I don't know how he did it but a man gets his hand injured and so like he's holding his hand a lot like you never really see it until later on where you actually see like blood running down his hand but like every time he's not like making contact with the rock he's just holding his hand and I didn't know if maybe like he slid at something because he was like holding his hand like it was all limp but he was still able to punch and stuff with it so like I said he was bleeding and everything but I don't know what he did it on um and then through, throughout the match, uh, Jerry Lawler keeps making, um, con like, or like following the hand injury, especially uh, Jerry Lawler keeps making comments that Ahmed is injury prone, which is what Ahmed was known like every time he'd come back and start getting a push he'd always get injured and um then taken out again lead which would lead to his like leave the coming and then of course with his attitude and stuff like that also but the match ends with Ahmed Johnson hitting the Pearl River plunge on the rock and gets the win for the match so he moves on in the tournament and then next up we get Stone Cold up like in the very very top section of the arena and he's up there like saying by like you know a little entrance they have up there some that you get up to that part um, but he's seen up there of course surrounded by all the crowd and everything because of course they're probably selling out around this time so there were people everywhere and all getting up in front of him and by him and stuff but he's up there because of course the whole restraining order thing but he says that tonight somebody's gonna get their ass whipped and so that's all it really does because I think either one he didn't have much to say and so he just said that or because by the time he finished talking you couldn't see him anymore because so many people were standing in front of him trying to get in the camera and everything um from there we go into a commercial for a laser 
laser tag thing. I don't know exactly what it is, but some like toy or game something. And this uh, commercial feature is Sable. And so it's called like Sable Secret Mission or something like that. And so like I said, it's a commercial for this laser tag toy. Um, so it kicks off with her. Of course, she's in like an all leather outfit like you classically see Sable in and stuff. But big head of Fre um, classy Freddy Blassie pops up and he's wearing an eye patch for some reason. But he's there and he gives Sable her mission. And so then it's a like laser tag game of her versus Howard Finkel. And uh, she ends up winning the game or whatever. So they're going to continue on doing these weird things with Sable taking out people. Next up we get a recap of the one night only event that took place in England. So I mentioned this in the last episode. I didn't know when it was. But apparently it was that weekend before. I think on like Saturday or something. But the biggest part of that is that Shawn Michaels did end up beating the British Bulldog for the European Championship. And so played a re like recap video or stills or whatever of it. And how he beat him. Because where they wrestled in the ring. It was on like a raised platform. And at one point the uh, British Bulldog and Shawn Michaels were fighting outside the ring. And British Bulldog like slipped off the platform. And so his leg like fell down between the railing and the platform and so while that happened it hurt his leg and then the other DX members came out and started attacking him slamming the rail against his leg and stuff and then was in the ring and uh, he put uh, Shawn Michaels put on some sort of move I want to say the figure four or something but I don't remember exactly what finisher or what submission move he put on or something and Diana uh, Smith so British Bulldog's wife ended up coming out and trying to stop it and the whole sort of thing and stuff but the match ended up getting over with um, Shawn Michaels winning and so he's the new European champion so he's now a grand champion in the WWF. From there we go into Vince McMahon in the ring and he's doing an interview with The Undertaker so The Undertaker comes out and Vince mentions that of course the Hell in a Cell match is coming up at the Bad Blood pay-per-view in October and he announces that the winner from that match so between Undertaker or Shawn Michaels will then face the WWF champion Bret Hart at Survivor Series so by that you obviously know who went uh, wins if you didn't know already um, but Undertaker just makes the comment that um, he's going to enjoy watching Shawn Michaels burn in eternal damnation as he calls it because he's always using those like cryptic dark demonic lines or whatever and stuff like that immediately following that Shawn Michaels comes up on the Titan Tron or he either comes out on the ramp or Titan Tron I can't remember but he interrupts and um, he's saying you know that once again the WWF is trying to screw him because you know the whole SummerSlam stuff pretty much everything we've went through so far but now with this match where he's put in a situation where there's almost no way he could win and now now the winner of that match gets a uh, WWF championship match which he thinks he deserves and so they're pretty much just handing the championship to Undertaker and then he says you know that unlike other people Undertaker facing and stuff that he doesn't lay down for anybody so he's not going to take the pin for the loss. Um, He says well except for Hot Mama so he lays down for Hot Mamas obviously and that uh, he says at the very end to finish off that he's uh, going to stay one step ahead of everybody so um, just kind of saying that he's got some stuff planned or whatever which somewhat does kind of happen I would say maybe not really sure but from there we then go into our next match of the Legion of Doom versus Nation of Domination made up of Farouk and Kama and so at the beginning of this match Sonny comes out and introduces it so she's just all over the place introducing matches now well, I mean only one match a night but she was doing the light heavyweights and then she was doing the minis and now she's doing this for the um this tag match or whatever um so not much like big or whatever happens throughout the match but at one point the Legion of Doom gets Farouk up to do the Doomsday device but as they're doing it D'Lo Brown runs in of course from the nation and uh, attacks who's ever um, I believe it's a uh, hawk holding uh, Farouk up and so because of that the Legion of Doom get wins by disqualification and immediately found that all the nation of domination members come out and start attacking the Legion of Doom and then Ahmed Johnson comes running back out to help the Legion of Doom and uh but at the very end the nation of domination is standing tall in the ring because they kick all the Legion the Doom and Ahmed Johnson out of the ring. Next up we get another Intercontinental Tournament match and this is between Owen Hart and Brian Pillman and so Owen Hart ends up coming out with like four police officers and Brian Pillman of course comes out with Marlena who is once again dressed all slutty and everything but since obviously since they're both a part of the Hart Foundation the match is kind of weird or whatever but it's mentioned by commentary that Goldust and Marlena like after the 30 days of Marlena being stuck with Brian Pillman that Goldust and Marlena will be renewing their wedding vows or redoing a wedding whatever I think on WWF at the 30 days but due to unfortunate events that never happens um but the ma <laughs> the match gets ready to start Brian Pillman gets on the microphone and he says that he's got to forfeit the match because he's got a broken arm and he's got his arm in like a sling but 
he has no cast on or anything. And so um, Sergeant Slaughter comes walking out and says that uh, he forces Brian Pillman to have a match. And he's like, if you have a broken arm, you need to show me doctor's reports, x-rays, and stuff like that. And Pillman's like, oh, they're in my car. They're in the hotel and stuff like that. And so because he can't do that, Slaughter forces him into the match. And so as the match is going on, at one point they're fighting outside the ring. Because they start off, um, they're like just fr- doing friendly competition things. So they're like doing easy moves on each other and like just taking it lightly. And then they're outside. I think they're outside the ring or Owen gets knocked down or something but marlena comes up and hits owen in the back of the head with a purse and so because of that um and marlena's with brian pillman that upsets owen hart so he just starts freaking out and then the match and anger and stuff picks up and uh so at one point during the match uh owen hart and brian and pillman both do a cross body in midair so they just like collide with each other it looked really cool and we actually see this later on in nitro too so when we get into that you'll see it and it doesn't look nearly as good for one thing. Um, but as the match continues on, Goldust ends up running out. And uh, as he's running into the ring to get to Brian Pillman, he hits Go- Owen Hart first and then goes and atta- starts attacking Brian Pillman. And since Goldust hit Owen first, Owen gets the win by disqualification. And then after Goldust ends up chasing Brian Pillman to the back and everything, Owen gets on the microphone and he says that, you know, he's dedicating his win to his loving brother. Brett. And um, as he's doing this, Stone Cold runs in the ring and starts attacking him from behind and once uh he's or as he's doing the sweater the police come in and they start um arresting stone cold and so they're starting you know put the handcuffs on him and stuff and as he's doing it vince mcmahon comes walking into the ring and he starts talking about like you know look at what you've done you're now being arrested you need to you know think about yourself whatever they mentioned that how the wwf won't let him wrestle and that it's you know to protect him from getting any further injury and that so vince is saying all this and that wwf cares about stone cold and that he must work within the system and so stone cold's like you want me to work within the system and all this stuff and he goes i think he like says he could do that or something i don't know But as he's saying that, he then kicks McMahon in the stomach and stuns him. So this is what I'm saying is the big part of the Attitude Era. It's the first time that Stone Cold makes contact with Vince McMahon by hitting him with the first ever stun. Which if you've heard people talk about it and like Vince has mentioned stuff, the stun looked horrible. Like he didn't sell it or take it right and everything. But so that's like I said the big moment that happens on this show. And then immediately on that the police arrest Stone Cold and take him to the back. And then we move on to hour two and so it kicks off with a replay of what happened. So of course the whole Stone Cold uh, stunner on Vince McMahon man so they replay that just so you know what's going on and we get into our next match which is another good match of triple h who comes out of course with china versus dude love but of course as um the match is like starting dude love doesn't come out but actually right before this um i just wrote down that uh jerry law because they like obviously focus on or whatever but um jerry the king lawler is off talking um we think it's like someone behind her but it's ronda sheer and i guess she's just from the show up all night on usa which i think is comes on after um raw and stuff but they're just talking with her but then it goes to dude love and he's up on the titan tron and stuff and he's saying that um this match would be more suited for a person he knows and he says mankind so then dude loves there and then you see mankind come on so they're in the whole kind of you know like green screen type thing where they're putting multiple people on screen at once and it's obviously all mcfoley and then mankind saying you know that as much as he would like this he knows someone even better and that would be cactus jack and so you then see mcfoley in the cactus jack outfit up on the screen and then um, music starts playing and so he comes out and as soon as he walks through the curtain he's carrying a uh, trash can and stuff and triple h comes running up the ramp and uh he hits triple h on the uh, head with the trash can and as soon as he does that ecw chants immediately start and so we get into the match and just some got a lot written down here but um just some like the big like important or cool things that happen to more like the extreme or um, hardcore stuff that goes on. Um, at one point, uh, Cactus Jack does a neck breaker on um, the floor with Triple H, and it's on the exposed floor. So they lifted the padding up around the floor or around the ring on the floor and like lift up and does on that. At one point, uh, China ends up attacking Cactus Jack um, and knocks him out over the railing into the crowd. So they start fighting through the crowd and they end up going through like a backstage like curtained off area, but they just go right inside of it and so. Triple H ends up knocking Cactus Jack down back there and starts walking back to the ring and like I don't know if he thinks he's won or something but he starts walking and the ref like starts yelling at him and he turns around like what what do you he's like what do you mean and so he turns
lantern and starts walking back, and a fire extinguisher hose comes poking through the curtains and sprays um, Triple H with the fire extinguisher. Then at one point, Cactus Jack goes for an elbow off the top rope onto the floor, but Cac uh, Triple H ends up moving, and so C Cactus Jack ends up landing on a trash can. How he does that, I'm not exactly sure, because he should have landed just on empty floor, but he hits his lands on a trash can instead. Um, then at one point, Triple H ends up hitting Cactus Jack with a chair, and then Cactus Jack ends up blow blowing Triple H and then does a sunset flip off of the ring to the floor so he's like up on the ring apron and does a sunset flip onto Triple H and then Triple H ends up shoving Cactus Jack towards like the ring post or ring steps and stuff but as he's doing that China stand in there so he ends up falling like on top of China against the steps so it like takes her out for a while and then from there they start fighting up the ramp and uh they get to the very top of the ramp and, and Triple H goes behind like the main entrance current comes back with a big plastics trash can and hits Cactus Jack with that and then he grabs a table and sets it up on top of the ramp and then uh he gets Cactus Jack up there to do the pedigree but Cactus Jack is able to counter and he hits the pile driver on the table and gets the pin off of that and like as the refs count one two three right after the three china dives on top of him trying to stop it but cactus jack wins the match so his first appearance in the wwf again another big part of the attitude era from there we get another recap of one night only again so just showing that Shawn michaels won the title and then that leads into Shawn michaels coming out to the ring with a chair and um he was, says that he's going to tell the story of winning the european title so he like sets the chair up and stuff like that but he ends up actually in the end calling out uh, Undertaker and so Undertaker starts to come out and as he's like down at the bottom of the ramp Triple H starts or comes running out to attack Undertaker but Undertaker like notices or whatever gets the spidey senses I don't know but he notices and turns around and starts attacking Triple H and then um, Sean comes running out with that chair that he had in the ring and starts hitting Undertaker with it so they're all just beating up Undertaker and so China and Recruit also um, run out at one point and start helping all beat up Undertaker and they attack him with the chair until um, at one point somehow Undertaker gets free and gets a hold of the chair and so he's got the chair now and starts like swinging at them and they all go running back up the ramp to the back. And then that goes into our last match of the night so our main event and it's a match between Bret Hart who of course is the WWF champion against Goldust um, and so Bret Hart comes out and he starts off with like a little promo thing and so he's saying that uh, Bret Hart does or that he Bret Hart doesn't care who wins at Hell in a Cell and that both guys days are numbered to face him anyway so like no matter who wins he'd be facing either one anytime soon so it's not like it really matters and so um the match then starts and so they both start off very aggressive of course with gold dust mad at the whole heart foundation stuff with because of brian pillman and everything and uh brett immediately starts attacking the left leg of gold dust and is just dominating the match pretty much the whole time brett puts the um, figure four leg lock on gold dust around the ring post the thing he's been doing more recently and as the match is going on Shawn michaels comes walking out onto the top of the ramp and then um while he's standing up there um it's going like a over the shoulder type view or side of Shawn Michaels or something view over the shoulder um, while he's standing up there like watching the match and you see just a piece of trash come flying through the air towards Sean and then Sean just like does like a matrix duck of it and it just goes flying right by him and so I just thought that was really cool um, then at one point Brett's doing the whole thing where he's got a gold dust leg like laying on the bottom rope and he's like jumping up and down like so he'll start like bouncing it on the ropes and then like you know squat down or whatever trying like he's crushing or sitting on Goldust's leg but as he's doing that Goldust takes his other leg and shoves Bret Hart as he's doing the whole bounce thing so Bret Hart goes up and over the top rope to the floor but that doesn't do much of anything because Bret ends up getting the sharpshooter on Goldust and Goldust ends up tapping but as immediately as that happens Shawn Michaels run down to the ring and starts attacking Bret Hart followed by Triple H and China then come running out to help Sean and so they're all beating up on Bret but then Owen Hart and then shortly thereafter British Bulldog come running out to help Bret Hart and so from there Rick Rude ends up <laughs> coming out and he starts um, attacking British Bulldog and stuff well then that to me was followed by Jim the Animal Nineheart who's re finally returned again I don't know I know he I think had like drug and drinking problems maybe back then so I think he was off with that sort of stuff but this is his return now so he's a part of the Heart Foundation again and finally the Undertaker comes out to the ring and ends up clearing everyone out of the ring but before he does that he or as everyone's clearing out of the ring he ends up getting uh, Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart into chokes slam like a double choke slam so obviously one hand on each of them picks them up and choke slams them and that's how raw ends 
And from there, we then go into Nitro 106 again from September 27th, 19, or 22nd, 1997. And this took place in Salt Lake City, Utah. And so first thing that starts um, happens in the show is that, of course, commentary is sitting there talking. And as they're doing it, um, Eric Bischoff comes out and starts interrupting commentary. And he's pretty much just threatening Larry Zabisco for um, interfering in the Scott Hall and Macho Man match at Fall Brawl. And saying that, you know, he better watch himself or he's going to pay and stuff. Well, Zabisco says, you know, that he has a special video for Bischoff and that he wants him to play it and stuff and they're just arguing in the video it goes to the video and plays and it's the video from uh 96 over a year ago when um the nwo was first around i think before hogan even joined um but it's eric doing an interview with scott hall and kevin ash on the entrance ramp and uh kevin ash ends up picking uh, eric bischoff up and power bombing him off the stage or whatever and zabisco saying you know that um he's done that to you once again and once they're done and getting whatever they want out of you that uh don't sp be surprised if they turn on you and stuff like that saying that all to eric bischoff of course he's gone by this time and from there we go into our first match of silver king against Rey mysterio jr and so as Rey mysterio is coming out he's been uh doing this thing more recently and they even make it that he's been doing it uh lately so it must be a new thing he's doing but he has an extra mask on his head and it doesn't it's not the exact same mask he's wearing but it's just like a, a like a cheaper mask i assume but he'll come out with it and then he takes it off and goes out to the people around the ring and always puts it on a kid but in the past weeks when he's been doing this the kid never looks happy the kid always has like just a sad or like just like bored look on their face and he just puts it on but they did show the kid later in the night through stuff with raven and the kid wears the mask the whole night so i assume he was happy with it so in the match at one point ray ends up doing a split-legged moonsault so it's kind of like uh, john morrison's finisher without the whole spin and stuff through it then so speaking a raven uh it shows raven walking through the crowd so that's all it does just show him walking through crowd and everything showing you that he's you know out there um then at one point uh ray mysterio ends up hitting a reverse frankensteiner as they call it because they didn't know what else to call it off the top rope and um immediately after that eddie Guerrero just comes walking out to ringside and um then silver king ends up going up for a moonsault but as he's coming down ray mysterio rolls out of the way so he misses the moonsault and then um Ray hits a her springboard her whatever they call it hurricane rana hunican rana I don't know exactly how to say it and gets the pin off of that and um so then at one point uh Eddie Guerrero ends so after the match Eddie Guerrero gets up on the apron and is talking to Ray Mysterio and then gets like yelling or saying whatever to Ray Mysterio and then he gets down while well, he gets down and the ref's like over you know like yell was like yelling at Eddie right or in front of him and so as he's doing that Ray runs behind bounces off the ropes come around he jumps up and over the referee and does what um Mike Tanay calls a somersault splash onto Eddie Guerrero and then so he's on the floor there and uh Ray picks up the cruiserweight title which Eddie's the cruiserweight champion and then just lays across Eddie's stomach and that's how that match ends next up we have the match of Hugh Morris against the debuting first appearance or whatever at least on nitro of bill goldberg and of course they don't know exactly any or like commentary doesn't know anything about him so like does he go by goldberg is he bill goldberg do we call him bill and then he's like do we know anything about him you know like you know any personal stuff or whatever they can say but they got nothing um so it's kind of weird how the match starts like you can see this is early in goldberg's career because they're starting off by do or throughout the match by doing like wrist locks and stuff so they have obviously you know like a hand on the wrist and like twisting it putting it around the person's back and everything just and they keep switching out of um, in and out of it and stuff and then goldberg has the wrist lock and then he like does a like roll type thing up getting um hugh morris into a leg bar or knee bar type thing but hugh morris is close to the rope so he just reaches reaches up and grabs the ropes and then uh, um hugh gets the upper hand and uh goes up for his moonsault on goldberg and hits it but goldberg taps at or kicks out before the, you know the pin and stuff and so of course commentary's freaking out and the crowd's kind of like cheering and stuff because you know that's a finisher and goldberg kicked out of it and then as goldberg is fighting off hugh morris and sends him into a turnbuckle Goldberg then just does a random backflip and uh, so I've never seen Goldberg do a backflip but he just does a standing backflip. He doesn't hit it perfectly but um, he did hit it so I was quite surprised with that. But after the backflip and uh, Hugh Morse turns around out of the turnbuckle and Goldberg hits the power slam. And then he picks Hugh Morris up and hits the jackhammer and gets the pin. So this is like the first, I'd say, official win of Goldberg's winning streak. So immediately following after that match, um, Mean Gene is up on the entrance ramp and stuff. And he 
he's saying, you know, we're going to try and get an interview with Goldberg. And Goldberg walks up to him and stops and Miji and asks him, like, a question about, like, who you are or something, like, wants comments or something. And Goldberg just looks at him and then turns and walks away to the back so they don't really get any more about him. We then get um, our one, first of two NWO commercials that are just a replay of the Four Horsemen parody playing off the whole, you know, Kevin Nash's Arn Anderson stuff, doing that whole speech thing. And then from there it goes into a Nitro Girls dancing in the ring, and then while they're dancing, commentary does an ad for the Nitro party. And then that leads into a, um, the replay of um, Larry Zbysko's action at Fall Brawl, so him leaving commentary or coming from the back, whatever, and getting in the ring and counting the pin for Lex Luger against Scott Hall. And then that leads into our next match of Disco Inferno against Alex Wright, who is the team. TV champ and so this is for the championship um so the match uh kicks off and then we get a view of raven sitting at ringside so again just letting you know raven is there um then at one um, point in the match uh alex Wright ends up hitting a single foot stomp off the top rope on the disco's chest and like commentary was impressed or whatever and had no clue what to call that and stuff but then um at one point alex Wright is up on the top rope and he ends up getting crotched off like you know just falls on the top rope and disco is starts like goes over and just starts bouncing the rope up and down you know trying to make it worse for alex right and so this is the part that i said um so they both do a cross body in the air so like i said that happened on raw they both do a cross body but as they come like fall back down disco ends up falling on top of alex right and so they're just both laying there and it's in a pinfall position so the ref gets out and counts and disco ends up winning the tv title but immediately following that you see mean gene up on the ramp and he comes out and he's out there with um jacqueline so miss jackie or whatever the harlem heats manager and uh she's saying that uh she's out to confront disco about something and so she comes out saying you know that um you won that or whatever and i can beat you or whatever and so she's like challenging disco and disco and she's also referencing something about that happened like why he was gone for six months and stuff and he's like don't bother me with this right now and like don't bring this up and stuff like that is all he's saying and he ends up walking off and that's all that really happens there so i don't know what it's going on but i think they end up having a match at one point so i assume in the future we'll start getting more parts of the story then we get our second uh nwo commercial for the four horsemen parody so again but it shows those different parts of the speech that Kevin Nash did as Arn Anderson and that leads into our next match of Scott Hall who comes out with six and he ends up having a match with Hector Garza um, but to start off Scott Hall um, does his usual thing and he wants to know does like whole crowd pull type thing he's like do you want to I want to know if you came here to see WCW or NWO and so of course they like boo or do nothing for WCW but chant really loud for NWO so the NWO gets the win of that little pull thing or whatever and so Scott Hall ends up uh, calling out uh, Larry Zbysko for a fight but as he's doing that though he also says that um, for his match tonight though he wants Luger and so he's saying, saying for Luger to come out there and Luger doesn't end up responding obviously but he only waits like a few seconds and so he ends up calling Larry to come over and fight him and so Larry gets up and starts walking to the ring from commentary and as he's doing that uh, Scott Hall ends up saying that Larry is all bluff and no stuff and when he says stuff he does the crotch chop so the whole DX type thing so the whole click is all doing the same stuff together um so as larry then walks to the ring but he's refusing to get in the ring unless six leaves because you know he knows if six is around it won't be a fair fight and that he'll get double teamed so he refuses to fight or anything unless six leaves and six isn't leaving and so he leaves and goes back to commentary and so hall's upset or whatever gets mad when just says bring my opponent out and so that's when Hector Garza ends up coming out and so the match starts and as the match is going on Scott Hall keeps uh, messing up with the ref or like messing with the referee Mark Curtis and so he's doing stuff such as he like rips the pocket off of his shirt um they all like the refs all wear the like bow ties and stuff and so Scott Hall just starts like spinning it around so like a air helicopter type thing or something um he untucks the his uh mark curtis's shirt and like starts like meshing up his hair and stuff so like rubbing his hand in his hair and stuff and this is pretty much just all a, a squash match and stuff so hector is getting beat really bad but he does end up getting um hector it is ends up getting a schoolboy and pin on hall because off um a time when hall is messing with mark curtis so he's doing that and Hector comes up, hits a schoolboy, and gets the pin off that. And so that upsets Scott Hall and stuff. So he um, picks up Hector Garza and hits the Outsider's Edge on him. And then mad at Mark Curtis too, he picks him up and hits the Outsider's Edge on him also. 
And that goes into hour two. And so, of course, with the um, switch over to the new hour, we get new commentary and we get Bobby Heenan. And I just want to say a uh, rest in peace to Bobby Heenan. You know, he uh, passed away recently. And I've been so, like, I found Bobby Heenan so entertaining. I know I'm too young to be, like, a huge super fan of his and know, like, everything he's done. But, like, all his commentary I've ever heard has always made me laugh. His just weird comments. The parts of primetime wrestling that I've seen of clips and everything. It just, I just die laughing because I'm a fine stuff comical like very easy i'm easily to make laugh and so all his stupid little jokes and stuff that make people like oh he's just really pulling his strings and stuff you know trying to get laughs i just think it's hilarious so i just wanna i'm very sad that we lost bobby heenan of course though that years ago he lost his ability to talk and stuff with the throat cancer and all that sort of stuff and you know he was such a good talker it just it just it was a sad thing to see, like seeing the pictures of him and video, or I saw like a video stuff of him, you know, more recently. And it just, it made me feel really bad, like just knowing how much I enjoyed hearing Heenan and that he couldn't do that anymore. But from there, we go into a eight man match, I believe it is. And so we have like obviously a good guy team and bad guy team and it's all like luchadors. And we have um, the bad guy team of La Parca, Psychosis, and Viano 4 and 5, and they come out with Sonny Ono, and they're going against the Ultimo Dragon, Cyclope, Lismark Jr., and Juventude. And so, since it's a four-way match, I just kind of wrote different stuff down, and it's just hard to keep track of everything. Um, so, Ultimo Dragon and Li um, Psychosis end up starting the match off, and at one point, uh, Ultimo Dragon's doing the headstand on the turnbuckle, so again, like Jack Gallagher does, but every time Psychosis, like, goes in to try and attack him, Ultimo Dragon does, like, splits, so he just, like, splits his legs apart and like so like psychosis stops and he just does that um two or three times and then on the third time or whatever psychosis goes in and ultimo dragon does like a double foot kick to him and then the park ends up getting tagged in and he does a top rope drop kick onto ultimo dragon and that sends ultimo dragon out of the ring and so juventude comes in doing a springboard hurricane uh hunican run or whatever onto him and so they say with this luchador mat um, anytime one person goes out, the another person from the team can come in. So there's no tagging and stuff going on. Um, and so then we got Hooventude, and so he goes to a top rope dive. But as he's going at one of the Vianos comes in and shoves him, and he ends up getting crotched on the turnbuckle. And then uh, all the each members just start fighting. They all just kind of do like kicks and stuff like that. They don't do any high, real high spots and stuff. So the rest of the members from each team come in one by one. But then all hell breaks loose. And um, so people, there's like two people outside on the floor. And one person does um, like a run and jump over the top rope onto him. And it's just followed by a bunch of people. And so um, one of the person, uh, Cyclope, he ends up doing a flip out onto the floor on the guys. But as he's like landing, his the back of his legs, so his heels or whatever just slam the top of the guardrail and it just sounded nasty and it just did not look good or anything and then um so every like all the other guys are doing this but all of them do it but ultimo dragon and psychosis so everyone but them do the dives out onto the group onto the floor and so they're fighting um ultimo dragon gets knocked off and is then on the outside and sunny Ono runs up and grabs ultimo dragon is holding him and Psychosis jump, or climbs up to the top rope and jumps off to do a double axe handle on the dragon, but Ultimate Dragon ends up moving. And so Psychosis ends up hitting Sunny. And so while they're outside the ring, Ultimo Dragon ends up getting Psychosis in the Dragon Sleeper. But since they're not in the ring on the floor, the ref can't count it or anything. But back in the ring, Juventud ends up uh, getting a roll up on La Parca for the pit, like some sort of move. He, like It's kind of like this, where they do like the spins around the body type thing. I don't know what you call it or whatever. But he's doing like that, but then goes into um, the double leg hook roll up for the win. So the good guy team gets the win there. We then go into an interview interview in ring with Mean Gene and he's bring uh is talking to Roddy Piper so again the interim chairman or whatever commissioner that he is and so he comes out and he's saying that uh Lex Luger versus Scott Hall at, or will, at, will happen at Halloween Havoc and Larry Zabisco will be the referee and then he starts talking about how WCW wants to ban um the steel cage because of it being dangerous and um stuff like that because of obviously the whole Ric Flair thing that just happened but um he says but that's why he wants um the match with Hulk Hogan because he's gonna um, in Hogan's career, tear him apart, eat him up, whatever, that sort of stuff is what he says. So we get that, how WCW, I guess, wants to ban the steel cage, but then we have WWF at the time, you know, bringing out the Hell in a Cell type thing. So we just get like the um, similarities and stuff like that with the 
match or uh, Halloween Havoc, we get cage matches and then, or a cage match and then uh, Bad Blood, we have a Hell in a Cell. So it's all just connecting. And then of course, Roddy Piper being an old wrestler is now the commissioner. And then we have Sergeant Slaughter, an old wrestler being the commissioner, um, taking place of two older wrestlers and that were the commissioners or whatever. So it's just a lot of connections going on. From there, we have our Lee Marshall Road Report. He's coming from Worcester, Mass, or Massachusetts, or it's like Worcester, but they call it Worcester or something like that. Um, and that leads into our match of Ming and Barbarian against the Steiners coming out with Ted DiBiase. And so not much big happens in the match. Um, it's with the all the team or the people. It's a match of power and like very strong stuff going on so power moves and everything um the steiners end up getting barbarian up for the um whatever the steiner i don't know what they call it i want to say steiner driver but whatever their like doomsday devices type thing so ming ends up getting up off because he was knocked down before he ends up getting up and shoving um, rick steiner off the top rope who's gonna do the whole like dive thing and so since he shoves him rick ends up falling onto the back of scott steiner who then obviously drops um barbarian and then ming ends up getting the tongan death grip onto rick steiner and then gets him down for the pin so the uh, ming and barbarian end up winning the match next up we have hulk hogan and eric bischoff coming out for a promo and as they're coming out it's not the nwo music it's just some like weird guitar music and i don't know what that is so i don't know if that was something w uh, wwe has like dubbed over or if that was their music but i had never heard it before um and so when hulk hogan comes out he's uh ends up or he's wearing rick flair's robe that we saw from the week before but this time the sleeves are cut off of it of course as hogan likes to wear the sleeveless stuff and so he starts talking about the match with roddy piper and stuff like that and he just says that uh, piper ends up or that piper needs to get a life and that hogan will eat him alive at halloween havoc from there we go into a match of macho man coming out with miss elizabeth and he's going against stevie richards and so macho man um at the beginning comments that you know as a gift or something to kurt henning that he's gonna let him come out with miss elizabeth later on during his match and so he gives her like as a gift or whatever and so of course as the matches starts and everything they keep showing raven at ringside obviously since stevie richards out there and they have their whole connection thing and the match starts with macho man he's like standing on the apron and he's just yelling out at ravens obviously you can't hear him but he's yelling out at something i'm um, at one point Steven Richards ends up uh, getting like knocked down at the ropes or whatever like on the ring out with his like head by the ropes or whatever and so Macho Man starts distracting the ref and when he does that Miss Elizabeth comes up and starts choking Stevie Richards and um, commentary says and I even uh, like thought it myself that you don't really see Miss Elizabeth do stuff like that or at least in the past you didn't so so that there's something weird going on there with her now doing stuff like that but the match ends with uh, Macho Man hitting the elbow of obviously off the top rope and then pin stevie richards with just one foot on his chest and then following that raven ends up jumping the railing and gets into the ring and him and macho man are just facing off like going macho man just like you know challenging him saying stuff to him but raven just staring at him and then stay raven walks aside and goes over and picks up stevie richards and hits him with the ddt um as he's been doing after every match so um that ends that Next up, we get a match of Conan and Scott Norton coming out with Vincent, and they're going against Harlem Heat with Miss... Of course, they come out with uh, Jacqueline or Miss Jackie. And um, so Booker T starts off by saying that, you know, Stevie Ray is injured, so he's all by himself, and so he tries to, you say... Um, you know, I'll have a match, but I just want one of you, so decide who it is. But the NW, so both Conan and Scott Norton end up refusing, and so it's just Booker T going against both of them. Um, at one point, Conan and Scott Norton end up doing the spike pile driver on the Booker T, and then after do, they do that, um, they just immediately start beating up, both of them start beating up on him, and then Vincent gets in the ring and starts beating up on Booker as well. And so because of that, um, the ref calls for the bell, and Booker gets the win by disqualification. We then get our last Nitro Girl dance segment on the ramp and then that goes into our main event of Jeff Jarrett coming out with Deborah against Kurt Henning coming out with Miss Elizabeth as much we give to it and this is for the U.S. title because obviously Kurt Henning won that match last week against uh, Steve Mongo McMichaels which I was confused about last week but it was for the title so with both these competitors in the match it was a uh, pretty decent and um, there was of course a lot of good wrestling going on here um, so at one point in the match uh, Kurt in a Henning ends up attacking Jeff Jarrett's left leg to disable him from doing the figure four because obviously that's Jarrett's finisher 
And so to keep her from doing it, he's hurting legs, so he won't be able to use his legs to do it. Um, then Jarrett ends up crotching Kurt Henning on one of the ring posts and getting back at him for the injury and stuff. Then at one point, Kurt Henning ends up at like yelling out after he's, you know, knocked down Jarrett. He yells out to the crowd, where's the competition? And then uh, Jarrett ends up kicking out, out Henny, uh, Henning's leg, so Kurt will be like up with his hand on the rope, bounce himself, and Jeff Jarrett will just come up and kick his leg out. And of course, Kurt will make a huge bump or whatever and it looks really funny and then Jarrett ends up immediately putting the figure four onto Kurt Henning and as he's doing that Miss Elizabeth gets up onto the apron and she starts distracting the referee and as she's doing that Macho Man comes running down the ramp runs out and then grabs US title and throws it into Kurt Henning and Kurt grabs the title and hits Kurt Jeff Jarrett over the head with the title letting go of the figure four and Kurt Henning picks up Jarrett and hits the fisherman suplex on him for the win so he retains the title and immediately following that all the the NWO members end up coming out to the ring and they're celebrating stuff and they all start attacking Jared and taking turns each person like doing moves on him and stuff and as they're doing that then the giant comes running down the ramp and as he hits the ring all the NWO members clear out and so he's in the ring you know challenging them they get into the ring and that's how the show ends. So, like I said, each uh, show was pretty decent. Um, once again, I liked Raw more, especially having the Vince Stunner and the um, False Count Anywhere match between Cactus Jack and Triple H. So, I thought it, overall Raw was a lot better, but as I said, I'm usually biased and always prefer Raw anyways. But I am enjoying Nitro, like... I didn't think I would enjoy it as much as I am, but I always look forward to watching Nitro each week. But that's going to be it for our episodes this week of the Monday Night Rewind podcast. Of course, these episodes, Raw 226 and Nitro 106, took place on September 22nd, 1997. So once again, if you enjoyed this, please leave a thumbs up for me and leave any comments you have in the comment section. And subscribe to both the YouTube channel and or the podcast on either, I don't know if you can subscribe on soundcloud but it's now available on soundcloud and itunes so you can just go to either one of those and search up monday night rewind and you will see like i said the old looks like the raw logo but it says m and r podcast so for monday night rewind and you can just subscribe to that and you automatically get the episodes downloaded through itunes and stuff like that so you can do that or like i said just still follow on youtube either one whichever way works for you just please do that for me and help me like i love doing these i mean i know they don't get very many views or watches or listens or whatever stuff but i enjoy doing it it's something i want to do and i and it's it is a pain watching you know five extra hours of stuff a week when i don't have a whole lot of time but i enjoy it and it's fun and i hope you guys enjoy this too i'm hoping to add more stuff as time goes on to make it a little more fun and everything and stuff and um not just me sitting here reading everything i would like to have you know like my brother join but then he obviously has to watch the stuff and he doesn't have the time to do that and everything but hopefully stuff will change and get better over time but please do all that stuff for me and just like i said make sure to subscribe to all that stuff and i hope you enjoyed and we'll see you in the next one Thank you.